Wow, 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 medical doctors are joker there. Eh? <laughs> they already complain a lot. You know, kids crying for everything. Uh, uh, kids open up their mouth wide when they cry, eh? and their eyes too. Uh, so they can see if you can see they cry. Uh, and take a long time to stop crying, don't they? They always do things. <laughs> If it's your fault, they stare at you. You're not my daddy anymore. I'm gonna get a new daddy from the daddy shop. <laughs> but the worst cry of all is the silent cry. You know, it looks like a cry in every single way, but there's no audio until much later. That's a very, very difficult cry to deal with because you as a parent think the longer it takes from the start of the cry to the sound actually coming out, the more emotionally damaged a child is getting. And it's very difficult to deal with. My daughter's always like, Daddy, can I have a sweet, please? Daddy is like, no, my baby, it's almost supper. And she's like... Like, just take the sweet, just take the sweet. Ah. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. <laughs> but it's hectic, dude. It's hectic. You know, like, I, I spend a lot of time with my kids. Spend a lot of time with my kids. And I think the more time you spend with the kids, the more stupid you become. <laughs> I have a hypothesis that your brain undergoes atrophy the more time you spend with your kids. You know, I can see there's some skeptics in the audience. That's re ridiculous, Riyadh. I'm more intelligent now than I've ever been. <laughs> no, you're more stupid. And I'll prove it to you. Parents, grandparents, you ever been watching like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse or Barney the Dinosaur or something like that with your kids, right? You're watching it and halfway through, the child gets bored and leaves. <laughs> the child is gone. And you find yourself still sitting there. <laughs> Watching Barney the freaking dinosaur. The child could be off running anywhere, running with scissors, sticking his finger in the plug sockets. But you mesmerized by gather round, kids. Let's sing a song. One, two, buckle my shoe. The wife comes there with popcorn. What did I miss? What did I miss? To me, they're all a bunch of bullshitters. You know how I know? Because you realize that there are no homeopathic versions of other modern professions. There is no such thing as a homeopathic pilot. <laughs> Can you imagine the boarding announcement from the homeopathic pilot? Uh, good evening, this is our captain speaking. My name is Captain Lim. I'm a homeopathic pilot. I graduated from the Beijing uh, Academy of Astrology, <laughs> Acupuncture and aviation. <laughs> I've consulted the feng shui charts. Today's flight is very lucky. <laughs> I'm also an Aquarius. And we Aquarians, we're very reliable and responsible. So you're all in good hands. Except for those of you who are Gemini. If you're Gemini, please leave the plane immediately. We are not compatible. <laughs> not this week. <laughs> Maybe next week. So sit back, relax, put your trays back into the original position, your seats in the upright position, realign your chakras <laughs> as we await for clearance from the tower and for the god of wind to blow us into the sky. Oh, it's not gonna happen. You know, uh, the next story I'm going to tell is one of my favorite stories to tell because it can only happen in a city like Melbourne, okay? Uh, it's a dream come true to perform here, but in 2015, that was my first time performing at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, right? Eight years ago, and in that festival, 2015, I had to do something which I've never done before in my life, okay? I had to give out flyers for my show. As we all know, giving out flyers is very rewarding. <laughs> it's a humbling, humiliating experience, giving out flyers. Society rejects people giving out flyers, okay? I was getting out flyers on the cold streets of Swanson Street. Please come to my show. Please come to my show. Please come to my show. 
One Australian lady saw my flight, took my flight. Yeah, sure, I'll come to your show, no problem. Very nice. She walked past me. As she walked past me, she didn't know I was going to turn to look at her. I turned to look at her, and this lady, she reached the end of the street. And this lady, with my flyer in her hand, she crushed my flyer, <laughs> my hopes and dreams. <laughs> and she put it into the rubbish bin. I was so sad and Lee cried. This lady had another friend who was going to cross to meet her. This lady saw her friend crush my flyer and put it into a rubbish bin. She was also watching me, watching in horror <laughs> at her friend crushing my flyer and put it into a rubbish bin. She looked at me and we like, she was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, oh my god, I'm so sorry. This lady crossed the street to scold her friend. How do you do this, Susan? This right, is watching you. It's so embarrassing. And this second lady, this something I shall never forget, touch my heart, okay? This second lady, with her bare head, no glove, nothing. She reached inside the rubbish bin and she pulled out my flyer, held it up in all its crumpled glory. I was so touched, I nearly cried. And then she put my flyer into the recycling bin. <laughs> and then I cried. Melbourne, this has been a dream come true. Thank you so much. I'm Jason Leon from Malaysia. Dream Kase. Hey, hello friends, we come to the end already. Have you subscribed yet? Yes, press the subscribe button and the like button and the share button. And thank you and have a nice day.